The story begins in a quiet corner of the internet where a young language decided it would refuse spectacle. Not because spectacle is uninteresting, but because it is imprecise. Zig was announced to the world not as a circus act, but as a vow. A general purpose programming language and tool chain whose mission is to help people maintain software that is robust, optimal and reusable. The promise is disarmingly simple. No hidden control flow, no hidden memory allocations, no preprocessor and no macros. The latest public release sits at version 0.15.2, a deliberately unsensational number for a language that prizes clarity over theatrics. This is a world where compile time is a workshop, not a ritual, and where types and functions can be shaped in that workshop without paying any tax at runtime. At surface level, it is a language with clean syntax and a standard library that values explicitness. Beneath that surface, it is a tool chain that lets a single command build, test and cross-compile without hauling in a truck of build systems. Its most mythologized idea is comp time, a method of executing code during compilation so that programs can shape their own forms before they ever run. CompTime can call ordinary functions while the code is being compiled, manipulate types as first-class values, and even emulate the target architecture. The result is metaprogramming without mirror mazes. This is design as constraint, not ornament. Who uses a language like this, and why? The first wave came from engineers whose jobs are paid in missed deadlines and tight loops. Jard Sumner and the team at Oven chose Zig to build Bun, a server-side JavaScript runtime and toolset that set out to be quick where slowness had become an apology. Bun is written in Zig and backed by a company that raised $7 million of seed financing led by Kleiner Perkins, with participation from well-known industry figures. The funding did not make Zig famous, but it made a point. The language is capable of bearing commercial weight. Another wave came from the world's most unforgiving ledger, Money in Motion. Tiger Beetle, a financial transactions database, is written in Zig for the unglamorous reason that correctness and performance are not optional when counting value. The project spun out as a company, raised $6.4 million in seed financing and then $24 million in a Series A led by Spark Capital, bringing total capital beyond $30 million to build a system of record for the next generation of financial services. The choice of language here is not an affectation, it is a survival mechanism. In another corner of the craft, Mitchell Hashimoto, co-founder of HashiCorp, wrote Ghosty, a cross-platform terminal emulator, in Zig. He did it not as an advertisement for a new toy, but because the language let him draw fine lines where other tools offered broad strokes. Ghosty is open source under the MIT license. The project is notable not only for what it is, but for who is willing to stand behind it. When the economics of open source came calling, Hashimoto pledged $300,000 to the Zig Software Foundation, joining a list of sponsors that has grown from individuals to companies. Andrew Kelly created the language and later established the Zig Software Foundation, a United States nonprofit formed to support the language and pay contributors competitively. The foundation publishes its finances in the open. In the year 2024, it recorded $673,176.73 of income, including $60,000 contributions from Bun and Tiger Beetle and $170,000 through GitHub sponsors. Expenses were a little over $520,000, most of it salaries and sponsorships to the people doing the work. These are not anonymous numbers. They are a ledger of stewardship. Zig is not only a language, it is a living compiler. For years it relied on LLVM for code generation, but a second, self-hosted compiler, commonly called Stage 2, has been maturing. In mid-2025, the Zig team switched on its own x86 backend as the default for debug mode on x86-64 targets. This is not an act of rebellion. It is an act of control, trade-offs made explicit in the open. The compiler's design maps a structured intermediate representation to machine code and gradually reduces its dependency on external code generators. For those who see compilers as palaces of mirrors, this is a small workshop with windows. The build system, 
is a demonstration of Zig's worldview, a project's build. Zig is a program, not a formula sheet. So developers can use the language itself to describe how their software is made. Standard optimization modes let anyone flip between debug, release safe, release fast, and release small. The default culture is to develop with runtime safety checks turned on and then choose the right mode for shipping. Safety in Zig is not a sermon. It is a set of levers. There is a reason legacy codebases care about Zig. The toolchain can act as a drop in C and C++ compiler, often without external dependencies, and it ships with the pieces necessary to cross-compile out of the box. It can even translate C headers and many C implementations into Zig, the better to move incrementally rather than rewrite from scratch. On teams that have learned to fear the word migration, this matters. It turns an impossible project into a staircase. The impact reaches beyond a handful of high-profile projects. Cross-compilation with consistent binaries reduces the chaos of platform drift. Runtime safety checks in development surfaces bugs before users ever see them. Error handling is not an afterthought. Zig models errors as values, uses error unions to make fallible functions obvious at the type level, and leans on try, catch, defer, and air defer to keep cleanup honest. This is not an argument for ascetic coding. It is a humble proposal that correctness should fit in the hand. Money, for better or worse, is a language of impact. Beyond the financing at Oven and Tiger Beetle, the Foundation's published accounts show a community willing to convert enthusiasm into salaries for maintainers. When a corporate sponsor's logo appears on the project's front page, it signals a transfer of responsibility from volunteers to professionals. In the last published year, the Zig Software Foundation took in hundreds of thousands of dollars and spent a similar magnitude to pay the people who sand the rough edges most of us never see. Those edges become smooth for everyone. But no origin story about infrastructure software is complete without controversy. Company in Japan attempted to claim the Zig name under a different banner called Zen. The foundation responded with a public statement clarifying its position. There is no courtroom drama here. Only a reminder that open source projects must defend not just code, but identity. Elsewhere, licensing conversations swirl around related projects. Bun uses Apple's JavaScript core, which is licensed under the LGPL. That choice is legal and legitimate, but it invites careful compliance and transparency. In each case, the theme is the same. Trust is a set of receipts. Some communities fear that venture dollars distort priorities. Others counter that large donations and corporate sponsorships are what finally make maintainers' lives sustainable. Zig's approach publish the numbers, thank the donors, keep the code open, reads like an attempt to practice governance in prose, not in slogans. When users of the language can see that $60,000 arrived from a database company or that GitHub sponsors contributed $170,000 in a year, skepticism does not disappear. It becomes informed. In recent years, the National Security Agency and the Cyber Security and Infrastructure Security Agency have urged the industry to adopt memory-safe languages, noting that a large majority of widely exploited vulnerabilities trace back to memory safety issues. Rust, Swift, Go, and others appear in the policy documents as exemplars. Zig is not memory safe by default and does not pretend to be. It answers from a different angle. Clear ownership of memory, safety checks in development by default, and a culture of explicit allocation. This does not settle the debate. It clarifies the terms. Arbitrary bit-width integers let a program choose precisely how many bits of value may occupy. That precision pays off in protocols, packed structs, and storage layouts, where every bit is both precious and dangerous. The language's slices, optionals, and sentinel-terminated arrays give control over memory without the fuzziness of magical growth. There are no exceptions flying through the air. Errors are values that must be handled or propagated, and cleanup is deterministic because defer is a promise made at the moment of allocation. These are not parlor tricks. They are gears and springs. CompTime deserves one deeper look. In many languages, metaprogramming feels like drafting laws in a secret chamber. In Zig, it is as if the carpenter keeps a small set of tools on the bench while building the table. A function can be invoked at compile time to generate code specialized to a type, and the resulting program pays nothing at runtime for the decision. Recent work in the self-hosted compiler expands this world further, 
enabling new backends for x86, ARM, RISC-V, WebAssembly, and even Spur-5 over time. A toolchain that can shape machine code directly is a toolchain that can bring new targets under its roof without asking permission. Related technologies frame the stakes. LLVM remains a triumph of industrial compiler engineering, and Zig still uses it widely, but the move towards self-hosted backends is a bid for sovereignty. Rust's borrow checker remains the gold standard for preventing whole classes of memory errors at compile time. Zig's answer is to make allocation and error handling obvious and unavoidable. C and C++ continue to power the world, but the reality of cross-compilation pain has driven teams to use Zig's drop in C and C++ compiler mode and its translation tools as practical bridges. These are not culture wars. They are supply chains. Impact, then, is a stack of quiet changes. Projects that once shipped different binaries for each platform can stabilize on a single build description and trust the compiler to do the heavy lifting. Teams that once ignored allocator failures because the code did so silently are forced to confront them as values and make decisions in the daylight. Companies that would never have considered a young language begin to experiment where the cost of experiment is low and the payoff is speed, predictability and control. The world does not become simpler. It becomes more honest. Behind the statistics are human stakes. When infrastructure software is easier to reason about, the people who run hospitals and power grids sleep a little better. When a runtime written in Zig serves a million web requests on fewer machines, that can mean less electricity drawn from the grid and lower costs for the businesses that keep neighborhoods alive. When a financial database written in Zig processes transactions with fewer moving parts, people get paid on time in places where late is not a nuisance but a crisis. These are small mercies. They add up. If mystery is required, there is plenty. Can a language that makes you hold the knife by the handle still win in a world that fears sharp edges? Can a foundation sustained by donations and a few corporate sponsors keep pace with the ambitions of its users? Can a compiler finish its journey from dependence to self-possession without losing reliability on the way? The answers will not arrive in a single release. They will arrive as they always do in systems work, through patient changes accumulated over years, through public ledgers and transparent decisions. For now, what is known is enough. Zig is not a revolution dressed as a syntax. It is a discipline disguised as a language. Names anchor the story. Andrew Kelly, creator of the language and president of the Zig Software Foundation, Jard Sumner, who chose Zig to build Bun under the company oven. Joran Dirk Grief, who chose Zig to build Tiger Beetle, a database for moving value safely. Mitchell Hashimoto, who chose Zig to build Ghosty and pledged serious money to support the foundation. Spark Capital, Amplify Partners and Coil, investors who decided that software shaped with this chisel could become a business. And the public sector voices at the National Security Agency and the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, reminding everyone that memory safety failures are not academic. Together, they make a ledger, not of dogma, but of decisions written down and paid for. There are unknown facts worth knowing. The foundation publishes its finances line by line. Bun's use of JavaScript core carries licensing obligations that the maintainers discuss openly. Tiger Beetle's blog reads like a love letter to the hardest problems in systems, and its fundraising demonstrates that there is money for honesty. If technology is a mirror, Zig is the kind that does not flatter. It shows what is there and lets engineers decide what to do next. The ending, as always, is provisional. Languages are eventually judged not by slogans, but by what they let people build and maintain. Zig's case is that correctness, performance, and portability do not require ceremony. They require attention. Anyone can pick up the tool and discover that the guardrails are visible and the costs are counted in plain sight. In a time when software touches the lives of strangers across continents, that kind of honesty is not just a virtue, it is a responsibility.